rated T for teen. In Assault on Meloria, a lot of the lore, in fact most of the lore, directly refers to events that have already taken place, both in Atreya's ancient history and as your David progresses through Ion's campaign quests. As anyone who played Ion knows, there was a great event called the Cataclysm that tore Atreya in half. This event killed millions of the planet's inhabitants and two of the Empyrean lords, including Lady Seed. What's left of the planet is shaped like an apple core, and Ion's fate up until now has been decided on the inside of the planet, in Elysia, Asmodee, and the Abyss. Now, in Assault on Beloria, we get to travel to the outside of Atreya and explore a whole new part of the world, Beloria. Beloria is the Belor homeland. Until now, the Belor have been in the Abyss trying to find ways into Elysia and Asmodee. But the Elios and Asmodeans have beaten them to it. They've found their way into Beloria, taking the fight to their enemy. The three main zones are Ingerson, Geltmaras, and Silent Era Canyon. The Elios have taken Ingerson and they're looking to move through Silent Era Canyon to take Asmodian strongholds in Geltmaras. The Asmodians, for their part, want to take Ingerson Fortress, and if they happen to tread on a few Belor tails on the way, so be it. Now both factions have Imperial Lords spearheading their attacks. On the Asmodian side, you have Lord Markitan and his champion Mastarius, whereas on the Elias side, you have Lord Kaisenil and his champion Vele. Now obviously, the Elias and Asmodians wouldn't send their lords to Beloria for a simple fight. And again, it's the campaign quests in Geltmaras and Ingerson that really drive the player forward through the story. Elias players are sent to Ingerson to help establish the Obelisk network. Obelisks are what stop Davis dying permanently, so it's important to establish a network of them before moving your main force in. The Hushblade Legion move in first, carving out a path, and the Wisplite Legion follows them, establishing obelisks, fortifying strongholds, and so on. For instance, the Ingerson Illusion Fortress is an elaborate illusion that they must constantly maintain. Another group that you'll encounter are the Petroliths, mechanical stone giants created by the god Ion as a weapon against the Balor. Many players are already familiar with Project Drakenhammer, an attempt by an ancient deva named Theobamus to reanimate one of these stone giants. Now they get the chance to find out the origins of the Petroliths, and the Jotun, their stone guardians. On the Asmodian side, you're sent to Geltmars to recover Seal's relics. These are incredibly powerful artifacts that grant whoever controls them devastating powers. The Asmodians find out that the Balor have already captured Seal's relics and are taking them back to Tiamaranta on one of the Balor warships, a Dredgian. You went to Geltmars just as Mastarius and his Archons destroy the Dredgian. You're then sent to the crash site to bring the relics back to Lord Markitan. However, as you get to the crash site, one of the Balor a soldier named Kumbanda steals the relics, turns on his brethren, and escapes. You then journey through Beloria in search of Kumbanda and the relics. 